us on this. We've still got time. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I call oh. the Honourable Chris Hopkins. Uh, uh, Mr Chairman, the, the, the member who's just resumed his seat uh, raised a, a lengthy and interesting uh, issue uh, which I'm sure the Attorney-General at some point would be more than happy to comment on in, in great detail, and that is around the issue of cross-references in legislation. I can say that in the almost decade that I have been in the House, this is something that has frustrated, I think, many a lawmaker uh, and many a law interpreter. And uh, I'm sure at some point, um, as we tidy up our statute books in New Zealand, it's something that we'll get better at. I, I think that the statute books that we have in New Zealand um, could do with a significant amount of housekeeping. Um, and I know that successive Attorney Generals, including the current one, uh, are working on that very process. The, but the, the more substantive issue, which is around the would there be one code of conduct or many codes of conduct, I think that's a, that's a, a, a really important issue to raise. And I, I'd simply um, draw at this point the members' attention to uh, an amendment made during the Select Committee process um, which made it very clear that any uh, specific provision uh, does, not any, does not limit or affect any other provision in, in the Act in terms of the conduct of a member. Their statutory requirements, if they have statutory, you know, statutorily defined requirements, would not be affected uh, by a code of conduct. But there, uh, there's another related issue which I think cuts to the heart of the concern the member was raising, which is around where people are subject to more than one code, because the code of conduct that applies to the Crown Entity Board might not be the only code that they have to comply with, um, because the Crown Entity itself may be regulating a profession, for example, where there's another code that's in, in existence. So, for example, the code of conduct for the di directors of Victorian public entities uh, in Australia states explicitly that it should be read in conjunction with any professional code that establishes specific behaviours relevant to that profession. If I, <coughs> pardon me. If I go to the UK Code of Conduct for board members of public bodies, it applies in addition to any duties of directors under company law or duties of trustees under charities law. So I think what the, the drafting of this is getting to is that uh, you know, I can't envisage that the Commissioner would, would be issuing willy-nilly lots of codes of conduct, but I think what the, they do need to have the ability to, to do is take into account other codes of conduct that those same people might be subject to. I call the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Chairman, there are two substantive uh, issues...